We are Tottenham TV here. The season is just around the corner. We're back in N17. Let's get into the season preview. The big question on everyone's lips, is the stadium going to be ready on time? You look around the stadium, there's so much construction work still being done. Is it going to be ready to move in on the 15th of September? I think we will move in here on the 15th of September. The Liverpool at home will be the first game. But I don't think it will be 100% ready. I think there's still a lot of work to do. But I don't think that's a problem. I just need to get into that stadium on the 15th, no later. Well, on the bright side, the stadium is looking absolutely fantastic despite all the construction work still being done. It looks absolutely marvellous. So the panels look unbelievable. It's the sheer size of it's insane, isn't it? And it's going to be the best stadium in London, so I just can't wait to get in there. <laughs> And that brings us on to Mr. Daniel Levy. With four days left on the transfer window still to go and Spurs yet to sign anyone, there's now a massive debate on the Twitter sphere between the Levy ins and the Levy outs. What do you make of it? Enoch and Levy took over the club in 2001. Uh, there's been kind of very steady progression since then. He took us from the lower end of the table mediocrity, got us that European spot, got us that Champions League regular spot, and then broke that wave structure which fans were crying out for for years now. In the last three years we've put together three title challenges or two at least. He's done a brilliant job so far but the question is can he take us to that next level? Well Levy has consistently sold our best players whether it be Berbatov, Carrick, Carl Walker or now even Toby Alderweireld. He took a long time to break that wave structure and is he more focused on making profits than winning us trophies? When you look at the whole Premier League as a whole, football is more of a business than a club, than like a sport at the moment. Um, but with one trophy in 15 years, yeah. is that good enough? It's definitely not good enough, but when you look at the bigger picture and where he's taken us from to where we are now, then I think he's done a superb job. But he needs to take those risks in the transfer window, like Poch said at the back end of last season. Those risks are very, very key to our progression to the next level. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. Is Levy the man to take us forward or is his time up? And that brings us nicely onto our transfer window. Well, Spurs yet again for the second consecutive season have gone into the final week of the transfer window without making a signing. This has caused a lot of anxiety amongst a lot of Spurs fans. However, given that we had nine players in the World Cup semi-finals, how much do we need to improve? I mean, it's very evident that we need a centre mid. Um, even if Moussa Dembele stays, we still need that centre mid. He's ageing, he's getting leggy. I know he's probably technically one of our best players in the squad, but we still need to find that long-term replacement for him. Uh, that brings me on to Toby Alderweireld as well. Like, it's very scary, the Toby situation, because who can you actually bring in that's on par? Toby is such a Rolls Royce of defender. Who can we bring in that, that's an adequate replacement for him? And the rumours that he's off to Man United have £60 million. Pounds. It leaves a lot of questions going into the new season. And you know, who does Spurs start at centre back? Do we replace Toby? Do we rely on Davinson Sanchez? And given that, if we keep Toby and Mr Dembele, we can't sign any more foreign players. So That's where do we go from there? We've used up our kind of foreign quota, so we need to sell foreign before we can bring that in. So that kind of leaves us with just English players that we can bring in at the moment. Unless and then, we can sell one of Sissoko, Dembele or Toby. Toby. What I've been thinking about is the English players, the, the Lewis Cook and Jack Grealish that we've uh, been very heavily linked with this summer. But have we missed the boat on Jack Grealish? Jack Grealish and Lewis Cook are not names to like make our fan base really excited, are they? So what is, a very, what is a successful window for you? A successful window for me would probably be to get rid of Sissoko, get rid of Nkudu, maybe even Lorente. That frees up three foreign players. Or getting a Rabio, getting a De Ligt, getting a Martial. These three players will really push us on to the next level. Well, given there's four days left of the transfer window, it's going to be a manic four days for Spurs. But let's talk about how did we get on in pre-season. Yeah, I thought we were pretty good in pre-season. We beat Roma 4-1 in America, we drew to Barcelona 2-0, we beat AC Milan 1-0 and we lost 4-1 to Girona yesterday in a, in a friendly in Barcelona. So I thought our American tour was pretty good. I think the first, the first game I thought we were really good. And what really surprised me about the whole tour was in Kudu. Mm -hmm. I know I said just before that I think we should sell him, 
but I think he performed really well. But having said that, he performed really well last preseason as well. So let's not forget about that. The few players I think that have really shown who we need to step up is definitely Lucas Moura, yeah. who I thought has been absolutely fantastic in pre-season. We're going to really need him first few games of the season. Oliver Skip, who I thought in a 17-year-old, who is a lot talked about last season, I thought was absolutely fantastic in central midfield. I think he's a player, I don't think he's quite ready for the first team yet, but he still definitely has signs of potential. And I thought Serge Aurier as well has had a pretty good pre-season. I think a right back, given Trippier, his escapade to the World Cup, he's going to really need to step in for the first few games. So it was positive on that aspect. However, the 4-1 loss to Girona kind of left a few question marks. Not really, because it was basically 80% kids. But is it worrying that none of our players have had a pre-season pretty much who are going to be starting? It's very worrying, but and you know... Sam's also going to be going for the Asian But most, most of our players had a big uh, World Cup, so maybe that can kind of counterbalance the pre-season. What are your expectations for this season? I'm hoping for a title challenge, go farther than we did in the Champions League last year and uh, win a trophy, FA Cup or League Cup. For me, I think first it's going to be first season in the new stadium. I would aim for a top three finish again, but I think what we really need is a trophy to bring the stadium home, get a trophy in the bag, stop all the question marks about can this team take to the next level. And I think if we can st have a title challenge, get somewhere in the top three, top two finish, and get a trophy, that's what I want this season. Anything less would be a bit disappointing. We sound like a bit of a broken record from last season, don't we? <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were stood here basically about a year ago today saying exactly the same things. Do we need to push on and actually win the league? I can't see it happening this season. I, I can't see it happening this season, but I, but I think if, if we do make the right decisions, we can, we can. We've got the, the basis with, to do that. We just need it's to push that thing to the next level. Those signings. It's all about taking risks in the transfer window, like Poch said. All right, well, that was our season preview. Let us know in the comments below what you think. What do you expect from this season? What do you, where do you think Spurs will finish? And let us know who you thought looked really good in pre-season. And as always, Kai Spurs! Spurs.